What's up YouTube? It's James Q Quick from Learn, Build, Teach. Today I want to tell you about the absolute best extension in VS Code that you can get for working with React projects. All right, so React is a super, super popular front-end framework. Uh, it's one that I, my personal preference is for React. I use Angular at work, but I use, uh, I use React in my spare time and I do my, my personal projects with React and I absolutely love it and so do tons of other people. If you don't have any extensions uh, already installed for VS Code, you're gonna wanna check out this extension that I'm about to tell you about in a second. So if you go to the Visual Studio Code Marketplace and search for React, you get lots of different ones. Uh, the first one is react native tool so this is not uh, we're not talking about react native here we're just talking about kind of browser react and there's several different ones on here but the the absolute best one that i would recommend is the es7 i think it was es6 before but es7 react redux graphql and react native snippets this just gives you tons of snippets for working with react and modern javascript so uh let's go ahead and dive into some of uh, my favorite features with this extension and just know this is the one real React extension that you're not gonna wanna be without. So I've got open a Create React App, uh, just a starter application from Create React App in VS Code. I wanna go ahead and pull open uh, this page again and just kinda show you, walk through the different snippets that they have. So they have lots of, uh, these are basic methods. So these are things that are uh, just kind of JavaScript in general. You've got import snippets, you've got export snippets, you've got uh, for loops and uh, several other things in here that are just kind of common in uh, JavaScript in general. Then you get into uh, some of the React snippets where you can import React from React. That's something you type all the time. Import React DOM, obviously again, something you type pretty often. Import component. Uh, import all these different things and then you have component will mount component did mount component will receive props set state all these different things so I want to walk you through some of my favorite ones the things that I think are going to be the most useful for you as you're doing react so I'm going to I'm going to actually wipe out uh, all of uh, the code here for the app.js and then uh, just show you imr is import react so import react from react <clears throat> That's pretty straightforward. If I also wanted to uh, import React and a component, then I can IMRC. So IMRC will import React and then as well component. So this allows me to then go and create a component. A component. So class app extends uh, component. So I could do that. If you use uh, prop types, you could also import prop types by IMPT. So import prop types. That'll go ahead and do that for you. You can create a, a constructor. So our const will do a constructor. It'll do your props and then uh, do the set state also. So obviously this is giving me errors because this should be inside of a component. So let's do that again. So our class app extends component. And then inside of here to create my constructor, I could do our constructor, our const. So there's my constructor with the set state and the super props. So that's pretty sweet. I could add component will mount with CWM. I could add component did mount with CDM and component will receive props CWR. All right, so there's a couple of the lifecycle methods that you can get as well. They also have uh, will update, did update, and a few others will unmount. Then you've got a snippet for render. So if I needed a render in here, I could do REN. That'll give me a basic render. If I want to do a set state somewhere, so if I want to do component did mount and then set state, there's SST, and I can go ahead and define what will go in that state. If I wanted to get access to a certain prop, I could do props, and then it will go ahead and uh, basically just kind of do this dot props, and then I could type in the prop name, whatever whatever that name is, and then here are here are some of the uh, those are pretty good individually, little individual things that you can do, but you can also do RCC to create a React component. So this will obviously uh, go ahead and create basically everything you need. One of the cool things that it does is it automatically names the, uh, the component based on the file name that you're in. So if I were to uh, save this and then rename app to app2 maybe and do this whole thing again, so RCC, it will take app2. So whatever the file name is, it will define that class uh, extending component and then uh, creating your basic render that you need. So you can also do RCE, 
which will do an export of the class as well, but it won't be a default. So this will be a named export down here. So this is RCE will give you a React component with a named export. If you wanted a React component with uh, prop types, RCEP will, uh, will give you prop types as well. You can also get an RFC for just a basic functional component that doesn't extend uh, React components. So there are tons of different snippets in here that are things in React that you type all the time. And actually, as I'm recording these video or this video, I'm realizing there's more of these that I'm not taking advantage of that I should. This is greatly going to speed up your workflow. This is the number one uh, extension that I see people using for React. So you got to check it out. If you don't already use it, you definitely want to use it to improve your React workflow in VS Code. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you learned a little bit. I'm curious, are you using any other extensions for React? Any extensions maybe in general for VS Code that you love? I'd love to hear about them in the comments. And with that said, I will see you guys in the next video. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out learnbuildteach.com to sign up for the newsletter to learn about my latest content. Thanks for watching.